Preparing for an upcoming hunt is both an enjoyable and exciting part of the overall experience, and as we made preparations for a hunt this fall, we did so with a higher level of excitement, as my nephew Andrew had drawn his first ever deer tag and was going to experience his first big game hunt as a hunter. Both he and my niece Morgan were successful in drawing deer tags for the first week of November for a unit in northern New Mexico. Jeremy had spent the summer and early fall scouting areas that he had found mature bucks in during past seasons, and he was able to turn up a handful of bucks that would be on our target lists once the season opened. Day one of their hunt started off fairly slow. We managed to locate a couple of mature bucks in the morning, but both bucks managed to give us the slip. It was in the morning of the second day that things got exciting in a hurry. Upon arriving to the glassing spot where we had seen the two bucks the day before, we quickly located one of the bucks as he was working his way up a draw. Even though it was going to make for a fairly long shot, we got Andrew set up on the biggest buck in the group and he attempted the shot. With a clean miss, the bucks quickly made their way to thicker cover and disappeared. One evening we all went to a spot that we knew had a group of three bucks hoping to turn them up. So get him prone somehow. 
With the sun setting fast and with only 45 minutes of shooting light left, we finally located the group of three bucks. Get over here and lay down on this rock. You need to be laying down. We got Andrew set up on the biggest buck of the group, a big three by three, and patiently waited for the bucks to present a shot. Wait till he turns broadside. Come on, turn. Can you get him? Shoot. He's going over, isn't he? All three bucks slowly fed to the top and then disappeared over the rise without giving Andrew a good ethical shot. Don't shoot him unless you can see his chest. He's going to have to turn to the right now and walk to where those other bucks went. Shoot, he went over the top. On the morning of the third day, Jeremy and Dad had dropped us off and then headed to a new area to glass. They quickly found two big mature bucks and watched them as they headed to their bedding area. Late in the morning, we all met up and devised a plan to put us in a position to kill the bucks. We drove right to that pin, the freaking buck was standing right there off the road. Just like, right, that was pin. <laughs> <laughs> 200 yards. You could have got out, she could have got out, put that on the shooting sticks and we'd be done. They just kind of eased up. They just kind of eased up and there's a shady side right there. So I don't think that they'll go over the top because the sun's baking that side. So, we, we, we went up and we found the road network right above them. And we should be able to get within 400 yards, no problem. The problem would be is either we're going to find them immediately bedded under a tree there and it's going to go down fast, or there's some deep arroyos. And if they drop in bed in those arroyos, then we're going to have to wait them out. They're going to be baking in the foot and so on. Jeremy, Morgan, and Andrew spent the rest of the day trying to relocate the bucks. But when the sun set that evening, no shots had been fired. With the arrival of the last day of the hunt, Andrew decided that he would shoot any legal buck that we could find. At this point, he was ready to gain the experience of a harvest and fill the freezer with deer steaks. After just a few minutes behind our optics, we located three young bucks. Hey, Andrew, I don't know how you're going to do it, but it needs to be a little bit high in his shoulder. Here we go. Watch it, Morgan. 
As we were trying to get into position to get Andrew a shot, the deer began moving in a different direction. We quickly ran up to a high spot and Andrew was able to get a quick shot off at one of the bucks. At the shot we all felt like he had made a good hit on the buck, but as we watched the buck run off through a saddle we became unsure of where the buck was hit. After giving the buck some time, we took up the trail at the spot that we had last seen him. Having covered a considerable distance and finding only a few drops of blood, we determined that the hit was a non-lethal one. While we were tracking the buck that Andrew had shot at, Jeremy and Morgan had walked to an area just to the south of us. As they arrived to the edge of a small draw, they jumped a mature buck just below their position. Morgan quickly assessed that it was a shooter and took a quick shot. Overall, this hunt had been a great success. Seeing lots of deer and having multiple close calls had given Andrew and the rest of us memories that we will share for the rest of our lives. With the setting of the sun that evening, we were all filled with mixed emotions. Excitement for Morgan's success, but also disappointment that Andrew was going home with his tag still in his pocket. After the excitement of drawing a tag and all the time spent looking forward to the hunt, the thought of going home empty-handed hardly crosses one's mind. But as hunters, we learn that sometimes the hard work pays off, but also sometimes we go home empty-handed. It's both the successes and failures that keep us coming back. <laughs>